All right, I'm super excited about this one. Does this Disney World Resort duo have the best deluxe benefits and you've been overlooking them all this time? We're headed to Yacht and Beach Club today on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Today we're getting ritzy as we head back onto the deluxe resort scene again. But today's video is pretty special because we're not just covering one resort, we are covering two sister resorts. Yacht and Beach Club are often referred to in the same breath because it's really easy to mistake them as being the same resort. They're right next to each other, I mean basically attached, and they are both located across the way from Disney's Boardwalk Inn. But as similar as these hotels may look on the outside, one's gray, one's blue, they definitely have vastly different offerings between the two of them on the inside. But I'm getting ahead of myself. For now, let me give you a super speedy definition for what a deluxe resort actually entails. Just in case we got some first time travelers in our midst here, hello and welcome. Deluxe resorts offer top tier amenities for top tier prices. They also offer really good resort perks like awesome pools and top rated dining and a few special guest benefits. But just because these deluxe resorts promise the highest quality experiences doesn't mean every deluxe resort's gonna hit it out of the park for you. These hotels can cost a lot, and I mean a lot of money. So you wanna make a thousand percent sure that the hotel you choose is gonna be worth it for you and for how you travel to Disney World. Thus, we're here to help you make that decision. Cause we've stayed in all these hotels and we know the pros and cons and we're gonna help you figure out what makes the most sense for you. So batten down the hatches, we got quite the resort tour ahead of us today. Let's travel back in time to start with. Disney's Yacht and Beach Club are sister resorts, like I said, inspired by seaside New England hotels from the 1800s. And though they may seem like twinsies upon first glance, they each have their own personality. I'm gonna show my age here, but my first introduction to these two hotels was watching Samantha Brown on the Travel Channel go to these hotels way back when, and I was so excited that I might get to stay in those hotels someday, maybe. Well, Yacht Club has a very nautical, kind of uppity feel to it with a simple but bold color scheme, brass accents, hardwood fixtures, think like definite like boat shoe and cravat kind of thing going on here. You're gonna find globes and model ships and ornate accent rugs and maybe even a hidden Mickey here and there. Now Beach Club on the other hand is filled with summery pastel colors inspired by New England beach cottages. Basically, as Samantha Brown would say, it's a little more relaxed. The lobby itself has a very open, more laid back feel to it, so it's a lot more casual feeling than Yacht Club. The resorts are situated on Disney's boardwalk, but you're not gonna be super duper close to all the clubs and bars like Jelly Rolls and Atlantic Dance Hall. You're gonna be looping around a more quiet, romantic, and remote feeling area, despite the proximity, which of course you can just walk over to those clubs and bars. It's only gonna take you like five to 10 minutes, but you're across the water from them. So whether you choose to go the ascots and khakis route or the flip-flops and snorkels route, you're gonna have to pay quite a hefty price tag for both of these hotels. So let me show you the range of different room options you're gonna find at both locations, from the lowest price to the highest, swankiest rooms fit for sailors and beachcombers of all kinds. With a standard room, you'll have a space that could potentially sleep up to five people, with the option of a room with either two queen beds and one twin size sleeper chair, one king bed and one day bed, one king bed and one twin size sleeper chair and one day bed, or one queen bed and one twin size sleeper chair and one day bed. For the record, this wording is stupid confusing on the website, just saying. As far as room views go, you could have a view of the rooftop or the parking area, but neither is gonna knock your socks off. If you wanna splurge a little bit more for a better view, you can go the garden, woods, or water view route instead. Standard rooms are gonna cost you between 650 and 850 per night without a discount, with the waterside views being the priciest standard rooms out of the bunch. Just a reminder though, that range is gonna be your cheapest option for Yacht and Beach Club. It goes up from there. With that being said, now we're moving on to those club level rooms. Wait, what's a club level room? You might be asking me through the screen. Some of Disney's hotels, mostly the deluxe ones, with an exception over at the moderate Grandestino Tower at Coronado Springs, they offer a club level, which comes with exclusive club level perks, including a private lounge that serves all-inclusive drinks and food through the day. And here you're gonna be served continental breakfast and snacks, hors d'oeuvres, drinks, desserts, but what you'll receive will depend on what time of day you're gonna be hanging around the lounge. At the Yacht Club, you'll get to be part of the Regatta Club, and over at the Beach Club, you'll hang out in the Stone Harbor Club. 
Is the word club sounding funny to anyone else now? Yes, me too. Each of these rooms can sleep up to four people and they're gonna cost you around $800 to $1,100 per night. Yep, we've just struck the $1,000 mark, folks, so hang tight, we're not at the highest priced rooms yet. If you want your hotel room to feel more like a beach home away from your beach home, there's a two bedroom suite option that'll also grant you access to those club level amenities. This suite sleeps up to six and offers more views of either Stormalong Bay, that's coming up soon, or Crescent Lake. But with this suite, you're passing well past the $1,000 range and entering into the $2,200 to $2,500 per night territory. Now, here's a quick note to keep in mind. The two bedroom suite specifically at the Beach Club can actually sleep up to seven guests for around the same price point. So if you're wanting to get one of these two bedroom options in order to hold more people in a single hotel room, you're better off booking with the beach side versus the yacht side. Beach Club also has other bougier club level options, including the Nantucket Vice Presidential Suite and the Newport Presidential Suite. So the Nantucket Suite might look more elegant, but they're definitely a smaller scale suite option that may be more suitable for couples since they can only sleep two guests with one king bed to share. These cost about $1,500 to $1,700 per night. But if you're looking for a presidential style suite that can sleep up to seven people, the Newport presidential suites have one king bed, two double beds, and one day bed, along with all that high-end furniture and decor for $2,800 to $3,300 per night. Nope, we're not gonna go any higher than over 3,000. I think that's plenty high as is. And speaking of rooms that are only available at Beach Club, so Team Beach Club also has deluxe rooms and one bedroom suites, which seem to be missing over on the Yacht Club front. Deluxe rooms sleep up to six people with two queen beds and one queen sleeper sofa. These cost around 750 to 950 per night. And regular one bedroom suites sleep up to four people and also have club access. Those are gonna cost between 1200 and 1400 per night. So I guess it's safe to say that although these resorts look similar to one another, Beach Club definitely runs laps around Yacht Club when it comes to all the different types of rooms you can book. And Beach Club's not done yet. Welcome to the villas. Okay, so those are all the normal room and suite options across Yacht and Beach Club, and if you've made it through the bed view and price overload this far, I'm proud of you. However, we are hanging out at the beach for just a little bit longer, because there are even more rooms you need to know about here. The Beach Club villas are next. Disney's Beach Club is a designated Disney Vacation Club resort, meaning Disney Vacation Club members can choose to select these villas as their home resort. And you can use your points to stay here. That being said, you don't have to be a Disney Vacation Club member to stay here. Anyone can book a room at these villas, even you and me, but DVC members will have first dibs. The room options here are designed to have a more homey feel to them, so you're gonna find amenities beyond the basics. Tons of extra living space too. All the rooms at the villas have views of either the woods, beach club itself, the pool, or the courtyard. The most basic of room options at the beach club villas is that deluxe studio. This sleeps up to five people, there's one queen bed, and a double sleeper sofa, and a single pull down bed. You'll have a kitchenette with a small fridge and microwave and your own little porch or balcony. These deluxe studios cost between 600 and 800 per night and are gonna be your cheapest option out of the Beach Club's DVC offerings. For some extra space, there's the one bedroom villa that sleeps four and yep, it sleeps fewer people than the deluxe studio. So it doesn't seem like the option with more space, but you're gonna have more amenities overall, including a full on kitchen, living and dining areas and a washer dryer combo in here. For those extra amenities in these rooms, you're gonna more than likely find yourself spending around 800 to 1100 per night. Got more people? No problem. There's a two bedroom villa that sleeps seven and also have two full bathrooms in these villas along with all the other amenities I mentioned before, the full kitchen, living dining, washer dryer, balcony, but adding that second bedroom and bathroom is gonna cost you an extra 600 bucks. So expect to pay between 1400 and 1700. All right, we got through all the room options. No more, I promise. Now we just get to look at them and judge them which so happens to be a specialty skill of ours. Let's look at decor. The rooms at Yacht Club mirror the same vibes you're gonna pick up from the lobby. The designs are clean and simple and colored with nautical palettes of blue and tan. Each room has a lot of wooden fixtures and ocean-themed boat decor, but no over-the-top Disney details. So if you're looking for that over-the-top character charm, you're kind of out of luck here. That being said, let's talk about the Yacht Club curtains. Yeah, it's not often I take a second to talk strictly about curtains, but these are really, really cool curtains. I can remember when they did the renovations here and I went and stayed in one of these rooms for the first time and I was just so excited to see these curtains. 
So these chart out fictitious Disney character constellations in star patterns. So you're gonna find constellations like Horseus Wingus for Pegasus from Hercules, Mermaidius Curiosus for Ariel, and Mousimus Jovialis for the big cheese himself, Mickey Mouse. Dear Disney, please sell me these curtains because they would look amazing in my guest room. Now over at the Beach Club, each room has a pretty neutral color palette among other various shades of blue because blue equals water, water equals ocean, ocean equals beach, right? The decor within the rooms gives the feeling of a beachside cottage, so expect to find pictures of seashells and sand dollars and coral and other fun little sea trinkets you might find washed up on the shore. Yacht Club's rooms definitely feel more elegant. Beach Club pulls from that rustic vibe, but similar to Yacht, you're not gonna find many over-the-top Disney elements in the Beach Club rooms except for a couple of hidden Mickeys. And then there are the Beach Club villas. These are probably the most colorful of the room designs, but still quite subdued. They're extremely spacious, and the layout of your villa varies based on which style room you choose. Now, per the release of this video, Disney's Beach Club villas are currently undergoing renovations until later this fall, and we'll continue to keep you updated about their progress on the DFB website and the newsletter, which you can sign up for free through the link in the description. Okay, let's move on to activities and some of the best things about staying at these hotels. You are gonna be as close to Epcot as you can possibly get without rolling out a mat and just sleeping in the middle of World Showcase. And that's because these are steps away from Epcot's International Gateway, AKA the back entrance of the park located between the UK and France pavilions. Depending on where your room is and how far down the hallway you've been placed at Yacht Club, the walk from your room and over to Epcot will take you about 10 minutes, which is pretty sweet. And that's not all. You can also walk to Hollywood Studios from these hotels. It'll just take you a little longer, like 15 to 20-ish minutes instead. Not interested in walking? No prob. You can also take one of the friendship boats to either of these parks for a more relaxing means of getting from place to place. Another option for getting over to Hollywood Studios instead of by foot or boat is to take that Skyliner. So Disney Skyliner Station is right outside the International Gateway, so getting on one of these sky gondolas to ride over to Hollywood Studios or any of the other Skyliner resorts is a pretty painless ordeal. You'll just need to transfer gondolas at Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort once you get to that main station to complete that circuit over to this red carpet park. As far as getting to Magic Kingdom, Disney's Animal Kingdom, and Disney Springs, you're gonna have to hop on one of the Disney buses to reach those if you wanna stick with Disney's free transportation, that is. Now, can you go into Epcot and take the monorail over to Magic Kingdom? Yes, of course you can if you've got that park pass for Epcot. Now, the bus will usually stop at both Yacht and Beach Club, and depending on the time of day, it may also make stops at Boardwalk Inn during less busy travel times, which can unexpectedly extend your travel time on the bus, so don't forget to factor those those kind of delays into your schedule. Overall, being so, so close to two out of the four parks really gives you a fantastic upper hand when you stay as a guest at either of these hotels. But if this is gonna be a Magic Kingdom heavy trip for you, a deluxe resort over on the monorail route like Polynesian Village or Contemporary or Grand Floridian could be a better and more convenient fit for you. Let's talk dining next. Could some of my favorite places to eat in Disney World actually be hiding out at these two nautical resorts? Absolutely. But before I dive into all the different places you can eat around these resorts, let me tell you about how you're rarely gonna find a shortage of food when you stay here, and that's because of three main reasons. Even if you've exhausted all your yacht and beach options, you're within walking distance to even more dining over at Boardwalk Inn and Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Hotels. The Skyliner gives you the freedom to hit up even more resort restaurants, places like the Riviera, Caribbean Beach, Art of Animation, Pop Century, and as long as you have a park ticket and park pass reservation, you can walk into Epcot and go wherever you want to. And that's gonna unlock hundreds of other different food options for you. So even if these Yacht and Beach Club restaurants didn't exist, you'd still be set for your entire trip. But we're glad these restaurants exist regardless. Alrighty, let's start by looking at Yacht Club's restaurants first. Ale & Compass is a table service restaurant that serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It offers hearty New England style comfort food with heavy focus on seafood. Some of our past favorites here have been the dark chocolate waffle for breakfast, those warm Parker House rolls with dips, so good, the Popperdell pastas, and the New England seafood pot pies. This is gonna be your moderately priced, kind of always available restaurant. And because this is also a conference hotel, that's where you're gonna see a lot of the conference goers kind of go for lunch. Now, if you're not feeling like eating a full-blown sit-down meal, there's always the Ale & Compass Lounge you can turn to instead. This is a full bar with specialty cocktails, plus small bites straight from the restaurant's menu, like flatbreads, lobster and corn chowder, and of course, those Parker House rolls, because bread, that's why. 
Another part of the Ale & Compass triumvirate is the market at Ale & Compass, which serves as the Yacht Club's fast food location. You're gonna find all your speedy breakfast, lunch, and dinner eats here like Mickey Waffles, obviously an essential, breakfast sammies, paninis, salads, and other standard quick service eats, which you can typically find around some of the other Disney World resorts too. There are quite a few steakhouse options that you'll come across while exploring the Disney World property, but Yachtsman Steakhouse is a more than worthy contender that deserves your attention. The steak and seafood here at Yacht Club is flavorful, the service is good if a little bit slow, and that upscale atmosphere makes us a good date night option. Just keep in mind that there is a dress code, not a super strict one, but you're not going to be allowed to wear swimwear like your bikini tops and your swim trunks and your flip flops, so make sure to change into something a little more sophisticated after your day by the pool and before you eat a meal here. Headed over to Cruise Cup Lounge, that's the adjoining lounge to the steakhouse, and to be real with you, it's always been one of my favorite lounges in Disney World. It's cozy, it's tasty, and depending on the time you go, it's usually pretty easy to get a walk-up seat, especially for a meal. There's gonna be a lot of people hanging out in there waiting for their Yachtsman Steakhouse reservation to come up. And if you can't get a table at Yachtsman, Cruise Cup is surprisingly a solid plan B. It's got some pretty tasty lounge bites right from the Yachtsman menu, like the prime rib, truffle fries, and lobster bisque. Now, they no longer have the prime rib sliders here anymore, which is what we absolutely loved and adored, but if you can get the prime rib and get those onion rolls, you can make them yourself. So that's all for Yacht Club. Let's see how Beach Club competes. Over at the Beach Club, you're gonna find Cape May Cafe. This is a buffet setup for breakfast and dinner with two very different experiences depending on your meal. During breakfast, you'll be a part of Minnie's Beach Bash, which is a character dining experience that lets you meet Minnie, Donald, Daisy, and Goofy, all dressed up and ready for a fun-filled day at the beach, after they finish eating their breakfast, of course, and waiting an hour before they go in the water. The breakfast buffet lineup includes options like salted caramel buns, those are really, really good, waffles, French toast, scrambled eggs, bacon, sausage, you know, the regular breakfast buffet stuff. By the time dinner rolls around though, the character dining experience goes away, but the all-you-can-eat surf and turf extravaganza comes out in full force. This endless seafood boil features things like roast beef, steamed clams, mussels, shrimp, corn, and potatoes, but if you want to add crab legs to your plate, you're going to have to pay an extra $29 per pound for that luxury. Yeah, remember when the crab legs were free with the buffet? Me too. That was a long time ago. Close to Cape May Cafe, you're gonna find Martha's Vineyard. This is a relaxing lounge featuring signature cocktails and a few small bites to eat, like the New England clam chowder, loaded potato barrels, and buffalo glazed wings. By the way, potato barrels, that's just what Disney calls tater tots. A big time fan favorite coming from Beach Club is the table service option Beaches and Cream Soda Shop. This is a 50s style restaurant with diner food over the top milkshakes and iconic sundaes. Now, what do I mean by iconic? I mean, where else are you gonna be able to order a kitchen sink? Literally, a kitchen sink made with vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, cookies and cream, mint chocolate chip ice creams, and then topped in literally every single topping in the kitchen, plus an entire can of whipped cream. Make sure you've got at least three other people to help you attack this one if you decide to order it, and I'm not gonna lie, I do recommend that you don't eat it straight out of the kitchen sink, like use the bowls provided, please. Once it gets all soupy at the end, it's real gross. And if you're not wanting a sundae that big, Beaches and Cream has lots of other sundaes that'll hit the spot. Our favorite is the No Way Jose with all that peanut butter sauce. And those will be much easier to take on as a party of one, but still not that easy. All right, Beach Club Marketplace. This is the resort's quick service. It's basically the same thing as the marketplace at Ale and Compass over at Yacht Club. Same kind of stuff, same kind of eats. And finally, if you're over at Storm Along Bay, which I promise we will talk more about that next, then Hurricane Hannah's Waterside Bar and Grill is your spot for all your poolside eats. There are simple bites here, salads, chicken tenders, burgers, and a seafood roll, as well as several alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks for you to leisurely sip on. Okay, the teasing is over. I'm finally ready to tell you about the best Disney World resort pool ever. No, but for reals, you're gonna agree with me by the end of this point, everybody does. Stormalong Bay is the shared feature pool between Yacht and Beach Club and has often been referred to as more of a resort water park. Stormalong Bay has a sand bottom pool, a lazy river, 230 foot long shipwreck water slide, a whirlpool, like a literal whirlpool that you like float around in in a circle, and three acres worth of water attractions. Wasn't kidding you, this thing is massive. 
Sometimes characters like Goofy and Pluto will even make a surprise visit to this feature pool. It doesn't happen all the time, but when it does happen, you're going to see a lot of super happy kids jumping out of the water to see their good beach-loving pals. But if you've never quite been into the water park scene, there are also three other leisure pools scattered between the hotels. The first pool, Disney's Beach Club Resort Pool, is located in a garden area on the far end of the resort facing Crescent Lake. This is over by Epcot. The second pool, Disney's Yacht Club Resort Pool, can be found in its own quiet garden area. And the final leisure pool is located at Disney's Beach Club Villas and is available for every resort guest to enjoy. Everyone who's staying at Yacht and Beach can swim there. Each pool also has its own whirlpool spa. That's a hot tub, not an actual whirlpool that you swim in circles around that you can take advantage of. But is there anything else you can do at these hotels other than just keep swimming? Sure. Other complimentary outdoor activities include nightly campfires, movies under the stars, tennis courts, volleyball nets, and a jogging trail. Because these hotels hug Crescent Lake, you can take advantage of the nearby marinas available boat rentals and fishing excursions. And to make advanced reservations for fishing, just call 407-939-3474. But if you're simply looking to get a boat rental, you won't need to worry about any advanced reservations since they're all available on a first come first serve basis. For a nearby indoor activity for the kids, you can always take them over to the Lafferty Place Arcade. But for an outdoor activity that's a little bit of a walk away, the Fantasia Gardens and Fairways Mini Golf is pretty close to the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Hotels, meaning it's going to take you about 15 minutes to get there by foot. For ultimate relaxation, you can head over to the Shipshape Health Club, a two-in-one salon and fitness facility. This place has various kinds of fitness equipment from cardio machines to free weights, along with massage and salon services. You can choose from facials, massages, haircuts, hair coloring, and nail services here. Think of Shipshape Health Club as a miniature version of the spas you'll find over at Senses at Disney's Saratoga Springs or the spa at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. It's not going to be as extensive as the ones you'll find at those two locations, but it'll get the basics done. Since this is the beach club we're talking about here, is there an actual beach you're going to be able to visit? Well, yes and no. Yes, you're going to find lots of sandy beach lined with palm trees and lounge chairs and hammocks and swings, but you're not going to be able to step off the beach and into Crescent Lake waters for important safety reasons. That being said, if you're looking for another spot to relax or chill out and maybe even get some reading done, you can visit the Solarium at the Beach Club for a nice sunny spot to unwind. You can find the Solarium located in the main building of the hotel. And on the off chance that you're staying in this resort for a conference, or maybe you're currently in the process of planning an important meeting or a large function yourself, these hotels also have shared convention centers available for rent, complete with ballrooms, boardrooms, and tons of space to hold tons of people. The convention center also features a business center where you can make any faxes and copies and prints. Anybody fax anymore? I don't think so. Shipments, stuff like that. You may need to send those out while you're on Disney property. These services do cost extra, but you can learn all about the different price ranges via the business centers page on the Disney World website. Now, whether you choose yacht or beach as your temporary home away from home, you'll have access to deluxe resort benefits for the parks. Early theme park entry, which allows you to enter the parks 30 minutes before they open for everyone else, might be available for all Disney Resort guests, but only deluxe resort guests have access to those extended evening hours benefits, which allows you to stay in select parks on certain nights up to two hours after they close for all other guests. This means that you'll not only get to explore relatively empty Disney parks, which is unheard of nowadays, but you'll also be able to get in line for most all the rides with little to no wait times. It also means you'll have a third chance of getting into a virtual queue for Disney's newest rides, Tron, Light Cycle Run in Magic Kingdom, and Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind in Epcot. Normally, virtual queues only open up for guests at 7 a.m. and 1 p.m., but if you're planning on visiting Magic Kingdom or Epcot during one of their extended evening hours nights, you'll get a third virtual queue opportunity at 6 p.m. Check the Disney World Park calendar online to make sure those extended evening hours opportunities align with your trip so you don't accidentally miss out. They only happen a couple times a week, so you wanna make sure your dates line up with when they're happening so you can take advantage of that benefit. So is it worth it? Well, there's a lot to love about the Yacht and Beach Club dynamic duo, but it's time to come clean. Is this really the place for you and your travel group? Or is there something better lurking out on the horizon? So you'll want to stay here if you want hotels with some of the best travel convenience. Being within walking distance to two of the four theme parks, as well as having the Skyliner at your disposal, can help save your family a lot of time and frustration that comes from having to solely rely on Disney buses to get you around. Granted, you will have to use the buses for Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom and Disney Springs, but if you're planning on spending the majority of your time at Epcot and Hollywood Studios anyways, a few bus rides here and there shouldn't have you wanting to pull your hair out. 
Now, if you want a hotel with tons of food variety within reach, Yacht and Beach Club is an underrated resort for those who believe food is a big part of the whole Disney World package like us. Not only do you have quite a few restaurants between the two hotels, but you'll also have even more restaurants that are just a stone's throw away over at other nearby Disney hotels and of course those two parks you can walk to. And maybe you want a hotel you can spend a full day exploring. I'll admit it, it is hard to justify spending hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars on even the coolest Disney World hotels, but the price becomes a little easier to handle when you make the resort a big part of your vacation. Yacht and Beach Club have a lot of included and premium activities that you can fill your day with. They've even got that mini water park and there have been many times I've stayed there solely because of Stormalong Bay. So if you're planning on spending at least a full day outside of the parks and enjoying your hotel, along with all its offerings, Yacht and Beach Club can and will show you a good time. Now, you may not want to stay here if you're looking for more Disney-specific theming. Aside from Yacht Club's subtle constellation curtains, Minnie's breakfast buffet at Cape May Cafe, and the occasional pop-up character meet and greet, there's not a whole lot of Disney-fied theming around either of these hotels. And for some families who want their kids' minds to be absolutely blown when they first step foot into their Disney hotel room, these rooms are more sophisticated and less character-driven than you might be hoping for. But with that being said, your kids are still going to have a good time at this hotel. Between Stormalong Bay, ginormous Sundays, and continuous Skyliner access over to those much more colorful resorts like Art of Animation and Pop Century, they're certainly not going to be deprived of that Disney experience. And you might not want to stay here if you're going to prioritize Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom is the hardest park to get to. And so if you're going to be spending most of your days there, it may make sense to choose a Magic Kingdom resort instead. And you might not want to stay here if you don't want to pay that much money. This is really the biggest red flag for these hotels. Yeah, we love the food, the location, the seaside theming, the over-the-top pool. But at the end of the day, having to pay $650 plus per night for any hotel is a commitment. What you can always do instead if you want to take advantage of Stormalong Bay and maybe the extended evening hours benefit too, but you don't want to pay for multiple nights here, is consider doing a split stay. You can choose to split your Disney hotel stay between Yacht and Beach Club for just a night or two, while spending the majority of your trip in another cheaper hotel option like All Star Music or Pop Century. If you do choose to book a split stay, Disney will even transport your luggage between hotels for you. You can drop off your luggage at Bell Services in the morning when you check out and head to the park. And then when you're done in the park, you can head to your new hotel and your luggage will be there. Now, I think it's safe to say we fancy the Yacht and Beach Club quite a bit. Even if we're not staying here directly, we still like to pop in and visit, even if it's just to sit on one of the beach chairs and take in the Crescent Lake scenery. But what about you? Are you Team Yacht Club, Team Beach Club, or Team somewhere else entirely? Let us know in the comments where you're planning on staying during your next Orlando vacation, and stay tuned for even more Disney hotel reviews coming soon. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.